so the Pegasus study was designed to compare um, C3 inhibition with Pexetacoplan versus C5 inhibition uh, with Eculizumab. So patients come into the study and they are treated for one month with both drugs. And at that point, after that one month, patients get randomized either into Eculizumab alone or Pexetacoplan alone. And that, then we follow the patients for 16 weeks to see whether there is a difference between the two arms. And after those 16 weeks, patients that were on Pexetacoplan continue on Pexetacoplan. And then patients that were on Eculizumab will switch now to the Pexetacoplan arm. So that is what we, um, you know, the way we study these patients. And this month of, you know, running period, what we call it, you know, has two purposes. One is to give the patients this opportunity to improve before we, you know, we draw a um, and also because it takes, um, you know, about two weeks for Pexetacoplan to reach sufficient levels in the plasma to have an effect on the complement system and inhibit it uh, to the level that you need to prevent hemolysis. Well, the, the key findings, and, and we have, you know, pres Something those uh, throughout the year. So the, the study met its primary endpoint, which was a difference in hemoglobin between the two arms, which is what is more you know self-evident when you inhibit both intravascular and extravascular hemolysis. So the study detected a difference between the two arms of 3.88 grams per deciliter, almost uh, four grams per deciliter, which is a substantial um, difference, um, you know, in, in this population because now these patients have higher hemoglobins, which in turn leads to an improvement also in quality of life. So to, just to put that into context, the difference in hemoglobin be, between the two arms is about 53%. So in, in Pexetacoplan is 53% higher than what was observed on the Eculizumab um, arm. Um, in addition to that, then, you know, we study things that are, uh, you know, important for the patient that is, you know, fatigue when it comes to quality of life and then markers of intra and extravascular hemolysis. So when it comes to fatigue, the difference between the two arms was two arms, um, sorry, was uh, 11 points. And to put that into context, about three points increase in fatigue is what is considered clinically significant. So really a you know great improvement in, in fatigue and, and quality of life. Before patients on, on Eculizumab, uh, maintain their hemoglobins at a certain level and avoid transfusions. Um, but 70% of those patients still are anemic and have hemoglobins below 10.5. Uh, and that is because extravascular hemolysis is not being controlled. And you see reticulocytosis, meaning that the, the, the maintenance of the hemoglobin also, it's because the bone marrow continues to produce and compensate for the continuous loss of blood through extravascular hemolysis. So when you inhibit C3, now you're inhibiting both intra and extravascular hemolysis, therefore stopping hemolysis altogether. And you see a reduction on LDH, very comparable to what you see with uh, eculizumab, a reduction in bilirubin, which is a marker of extravascular hemolysis, and then a reduction of reticulocytes. That's from a marker, a biomarker perspective. Um, with that, you see an increase in hemoglobin, as I said before, almost you know, four grams difference between the two arms and an improvement in quality of life, as, as well as a reduction in transfusion dependency. So what's important for the patients, quality of life, transfusion dependency. Uh, and our drug is also administered subcutaneously. So that could be for certain patients a benefit because you do not have to go to a clinic, you know, every other week, or in the case of ultramaris, you know, every eight weeks to get your IV dosing. You have the drug at home, you can do it two times a week. You can take a vacation to drug review. So those are the benefits that we see for the patients and for the, the community out there.